Okay, I'm super excited. Uh, today, earlier today, I got a shipment of thread. All kinds of different colored thread. They come on these little cool little spools here, all different colors. So uh, I'm gonna start playing around with making a patch. Now remember, my final goal is to make a patch with an integrated circuit into it. And it's very important to me that the uh, machine actually do it. I mean, I, I really, I'm getting a kick out of the concept of like printing a circuit into the textile. That's my goal. But before I can get into this new custom thing, I gotta start with, you know, how the heck do you make a patch in the first place? Something people already know how to do, but I'm just now figuring it out. So, uh, let me show you what I've done already, and then we'll try running the very first real embroider, not just the test embroider, uh, on this machine. I haven't tried this yet, so we'll see. Okay, let me show you what I've done. The first thing I did was I went out and I found a suitable octopus. I wanted something that was easy to see, easy to read, had simple colors. Uh, this is made by an artist named Jamie Dillon. I'll try to find a link and put it in the video description. And then I downloaded that, I pulled it into Photoshop, and I cleaned it up, reduced the amount of colors, so I'm down to like five colors now. Uh, you can't see here because of this stupid uh, Windows image viewer, but this is actually a transparent background, and I added a black outline to this entire thing, because as a patch, I wanted to have that, that black outline. And then I pulled everything into some software called SoArt64, which has a wizard that allows me to come through uh, and, and figure out the stitching for everything. It spits it out into the right um, code for this machine. And so now I know I've got four colors. I've got the code set up. I've already dropped it on the machine. I just need to put some fabric in it, uh, put the thread in it, and give it a go and we'll see what happens. This is really a test. I have not tried this yet. You can see I haven't even pulled the fabric out of its containers. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Let's do it. It's 5.9 by 7.2 centimeters on this screen. I can't even think what that is in my brain in terms of inches, um, but it's got a little button you can push where it does the perimeter of the patch so that you can see, or the, of the design so you can see how big it'll be. And that is perfectly suitable to me. So I've got it down, I've got it on, I've got everything set up, I think. If I just hit the button, I'm good to go. So, um, fingers crossed. Here we go. So right off the bat, I'm noticing beginner's mistake number one. My bobbin still has white thread and I can see it from the top. Like it's pulling, it's got white thread on the bottom. If you're not used to sewing the, the bobbins on the bottom and it's connecting and it pulls that white thread up and I can see it on the top. So what ideally what I would do is I'd match the bottom, the bobbin to the color on top, but I didn't even think about it. I was just so excited. Uh, I stopped recording for a while. That took about 15 minutes, and I don't know how well you can see it here. This is the black one. It turned out nice and thick like I wanted, but it's very kind of salt and pepper looking because, again, it's pulling through that white bobbin. Um, so, you know, common sense for anybody who's been doing this for a long time, but new to me, I didn't even think about swapping out my bobbin color. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm not going to swap it for everyone, every color. 
I'm just going to keep going like this and see how it turns out. So next up is the light blue and I've got it threaded and it should be good to go. I just hit the button and we're off to the races. Here's something that I already love about a modern machine. You feed it through this, cut off your extra over here, and then uh, this switch here, you pull it down and it threads your needle for you. That's magic. That's magic. Boy, I love that. I don't have to thread my needle anymore. When you have big, shaky, clumsy, dumb hands like me, threading a needle is a pain in the butt. And people say uh, there's a tool for it, which is a little metal kind of a loop that goes through the eye, but you gotta thread that through the eye. I mean, if you're gonna thread something through, you're already done. Why, why do it twice to use the tool? All right, anyway, here we go. On with the orange. This is the darker part of the orange. So this should do the darker bits of the octopus body, and then we'll come back through and we'll do the highlights. I think, I hope. Unless I just, uh, unless I just got it swapped around. That's okay, I got enough colors that I could shift it if I had to. Okay, we're down to our final color here. I don't know if I was supposed to clean up each one of those layers in between or not. Um, I guess I will be learning here and finding out. But, all right, here we go. Um, let's see how it goes. This is our final color. Here's something that I think is cool. It runs a, uh, a lattice first before it colors something in solid, so it takes multiple passes. Um, I've got some theories why I think it does that. I'm not 100% sure, but I suspect that helps keep it stable and keep it from wrinkling up from the stress. Um, it's interesting. 
It's almost like infill on a 3D printer. All right, let's take a look at this sucker. I got sick of cutting the threads off, so I'm not cleaning it up anymore um, because this one isn't gonna go on anything. This is just a learning example. And already I can see a few things that I learned. One, um, I should take the time to, to thread some bobbins with the matching colors that I'm gonna use because you can see that white all over the place pulling through. Um, and I gotta adjust my designs a little bit, you know, uh, for how the machine lays down the thread. I'm sure there are some settings I could do within the software to be able to get some of those details better. Uh, the next steps from here would be to uh, put this stuff around all of the edges to keep it from fraying, iron it on to a rigid backer if you wanted to send it to someone in, kind of like this one I got from Adafruit, see how rigid that is, um, and then to cut it around the octopus. Uh, I'm not going to do all that though. This was, again, just a, a learning example and it turned out pretty well. It took about 30 minutes, um, so you know, this isn't the kind of thing you're going to be spitting out, you know, a hundred of these and, and making a profit unless you're charging a considerable amount of money. Um, you'd need a big machine that did a whole bunch at once to pull that off. But, you know, I'm happy with how this turned out. It turned out better than I would have expected for the very first run. So, you know, time to refine and get better. I'm excited to compare this after I figure out the tools a little bit better. All right, see you next time.